Hello everyone, welcome to Formula Story. Today I'm going to be discussing some awesome tricks and shortcuts which will come in handy while solving problems based on compound interest and simple interest. So let's begin. The first trick is called rule of 72 for compound interest. The formula is T is equal to 72 by R. This formula comes in handy when you are said that a particular amount doubles and the rate of interest is R. Suppose we are given the rate of interest and we need to find the time in which the particular amount will double. Then all you got to do is time period is equal to 72 by R. For example, if the rate of interest is 10%, then the time taken for the amount to double will be 72 by 10, which is 7.2 years. The next shortcut is when the questions are based on difference between compound interest and simple interest. The first case is when the time period given is 2 years. Uh, so when the time period given is 2 years, the difference between compound interest and simple interest is given by P into R by 100 the whole square. And the second formula is Ci minus Si is equal to R into Si upon 2 into 100. The first formula comes in handy when we are given the principal and the second formula comes in handy when you are given the simple interest. So suppose the question is that the difference between compound interest and simple interest is 200 and the rate of interest is 5% and you need to, found, you need to find the principal amount. Then all you got to do is substitute all the values in the first formula and you will get the value of the principal. Suppose you are given the difference between the compound interest and the simple interest for a period of 2 years. Remember it's for a period of 2 years is some particular value say 200 and the simple interest given is uh, suppose 400 and you, you need to find the rate of interest. Then all you got to do is substitute CI minus SI as 200, SI as 400 and then do the calculation to get the value of rate of interest. As simple as that. Now the next trick is when the time period is 3 years. Uh, suppose now the, we have to find the question is based on the difference between compound interest and simple interest and the time period is 3 years. Then the first formula is Ci minus Si is equal to PR square upon 10 raised to 4 into 300 plus R upon 100. And the second formula is Ci minus Si is equal to Si by 3 into R by 100 the whole square plus 3 into R by 100. The first formula comes in handy when we are given the difference between compound interest and simple interest and we are given the rate of interest and we need to find the principal amount. And the second formula comes in handy when we are given the difference between CI and SI and we are given the simple interest and we need to find the rate of interest. I know it might be a bit difficult to memorize this formula but once you do it you can solve such questions in a matter of seconds. The next trick is when questions are based on money becoming n times. There are two different formulas. One is for simple interest and another one is for compound interest. Suppose it is given that in case of a simple interest a particular principal amount becomes 4 times in a period of 6 years then you need to find the rate of interest. Then rather than using the conventional method all you got to do is use this shortcut. Now we know that the money is becoming 4 times so n minus 1 will become 3. So RT will be 3 into 100 and we know that the time period is 6 years. So 300 divided by 6 will be 50% and our rate of interest will be 50%. Suppose the question was in case of compound interest we are given that the money becomes 16 times in a period of 4 years then all you got to do is to find the rate of interest substitute n 16 year and the time period 4 years here. So 16 raised to 1 by 4 as we all know will be 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So the rate of interest will be 100 into 1 which is 100%. So for such questions based on money becoming n times in case of simple interest and compound interest you can use these two formulas so as to find the rate of interest. And trust me people, you will be able to solve such sums really fast. Rather than using the conventional method, you can use these shortcuts to solve the sums. So that's it people, I would recommend to memorize all these formulas before going for any of the exams so that you can solve sums based on compound interest and simple interest really fast. And I will come up with more interesting videos. Till then do like my video and subscribe to my channel and also post your valuable feedback so that I can improve at my upcoming videos. Thank you.